That was my attempt at an opening jingle. Today, we're going to talk about, I say we, I'm going to talk, you're maybe going to listen. Um, we're going to talk about a song that I used to hate as a child um, that I actually really, really love now. And it was a song that made me want to start making these videos. Uh, it's Pure Imagination from the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory film from 19, I don't know, 890 something? I don't know. Um, the version with Gene Wilder. I used to hate the song, you know, I thought the film was great, and then there was this boring bit where the man sings and it's sad or whatever, you know, and then he's pedalling on a bike later. Uh, roll back a couple of years and I heard the Jacob Collier version, of course, and uh, listened a lot again to the Gene Wilder version and realised that actually it's a really, really cool song. In particular, it has the, the cadence at the end, I thought it was a typo or something, and I was like, oh no, no, that does work, why? Um, that's why I wanted to make this video just to kind of highlight uh, fun little cadences or little chord progressions that pop up everywhere that, or maybe pop up in one place, and that can be useful if you are just looking for fun harmonic ideas. But sorry, I've got my notes down here, so I keep on looking down here. It's very unprofessional. I should uh, pay someone to stand behind the, my laptop with, uh, you know, the, the things with the words on them. So, yeah, there's the Dream Wilder version, which I listen to a lot. And bizarrely, I think I think he's a very good singer. Um, maybe not so much in terms of like singing technique. I mean, I don't know, he's better than me. Uh, but just the way his his rhythm is it's interesting. I would go and listen to it if you haven't listened to it in a while. It's much better than I remember it being. So the song itself is one that I think a lot of people know. It's just, I mean, the tune at the beginning is just, you know, come with me and he'll sing. Okay. And even that has some really fun uh, uh, chordal choices that you can make with it that come kind of naturally. If you do something along the lines of... So that's like a... And then... Uh, you know, I mean anything. It's just the intro itself can sound really beautiful and I really love this as an I mean even just the 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 F minor chord that it's over uh, with the melody of the B flat gives you this really nice it's just root third fourth uh, really nice chord and if you lower the third to a second what I was talking about and use the fact that on a guitar you've got this nice natural harmonic here you get this lovely I really like. So that's the, end, the, the, the the beginning of the song, how it goes, but the really nice thing I think is the cadence. And it's in the key of E flat major, this song, um, so it's three flats, um, and the cadence at the end is E natural, major seven, sharp eleven, uh, B major seven, and then E flat major seven, which is, 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 like I say, it's not something I'd ever seen before. So what we're going to talk about is why this works, what it sounds like, you know, what you can get out of it, that kind of stuff. Um, it's very shiny, isn't it? Oof. First of all, one thing that really holds this whole progression together is one of the notes, which is a B flat, mm -hmm. um, which is found in all three chords. Sharp 11, then it's the major seven, then it's the five. What does that sound like? So first of all, Tiny interlude here for any guitarists watching. This chord in this voicing is is a, is a tough chord to play. It's E major seven sharp eleven voiced, starting on the fifth string, and we just go root. It's like the classic major seven voicing for a guitarist in an A shape is root one five seven major seven three. If we want to add the sharp four on top of that, it's usually found here. Okay, it says there's a. It's a hard chord to play because you don't really have enough fingers, uh, but you do, you just don't realise it. So I'm just going to talk quickly about some ways to play this chord. First of all, if you're going to arpeggiate this chord or play it slowly, you can always cheat because your index finger can do both the notes and because it does the first and the last, that gives you a lot of time to get from one to the other. So you can do something like... Okay. Which is nice and easy. Also, the fact that it's... Uh, 
an E chord here is really nice because it means we can just forget this rune altogether, stick it an octave down and do this. And there's no funny finger stuff going on at all. There are some other ways to do it. There's the way which I would approach this chord, which is probably the most uncomfortable and worst way, uh, but it's a cowboy chord grip, I've heard it called. I uh, find it very hard to do on this guitar because I've got it very high so the camera can see it. But it, the, the cowboy grip, as, as I've heard it called, is basically, it's how I play uh, any like E-shaped chord rather than playing a bar chord like this. I would play it like this with my thumb doing the root. Um, so it's just a nice, it's a nice method that I use a lot, using your thumb because you've got a spare thumb. It's, well. I guess you've got the right amount of thumbs, but it's kind of doing nothing normally when you play guitar. So you can kind of hook it up over in this and do this. Uh, it's not entirely comfortable if you wanted to hold it, but if you've just come from a chord that's here, it's kind of not too hard to get there. And one way which I had never thought of until recently, I saw a video by a guitarist named Nathaniel Murphy, um, doing a incredible cover of Yesterday by the Beatles that blew me away. He throws in so many extended techniques, but in a way that seems actually really natural and not at all flashy. Um, and one thing he does is he puts his thumb under the guitar, which is great. Honestly, I saw it and I had to pause the video and rewind it. I was shocked. Um, but it's basically, we want to hit this note here. So rather than putting my thumb over and playing this with my index, I just put my thumb under the guitar like this. And you get this... Uh and it feels kind of weird at first, but actually as you start to do it, you realize that if you've if you've already got your thumb right on the back of the guitar neck and you're not playing cowboy grip, then it's actually pretty natural to do. And it's uh, it's, uh, it's a really interesting technique. Definitely go check out the video of him playing. I'll link it in the description below here. If I can figure out how to do it, I'll put a, uh, a thing here that you can click. Uh, another way you can do it, uh, you can, so exactly the same voice, I mean obviously you could switch to a different voicing to play this chord easier. You could uh, kind of, I mean now you change the voicing slightly, but staying roughly in the same finger position, change the third to the sharp fourth, which is still a lovely sound chord even without the third. Um, it's very nice, you get this major seven sound here. So really yeah, it feels like a, I mean it's a B major seven over an E. That's not at all how you should think of the chord, but that's just the way it's split here in this voicing. If you're gonna do that though, it's nice to have the third in. So I would switch to a voicing like this, which would be root, third, seven, sharp four, um, which is this nice, easier to play. And if you're gonna do that, you might as well chuck in a nine, because it's right there. Not like that though. Oh. There we go that kind of chord. Um, so now let's actually talk about what the cadence is, what it does. Let me play it one more time because I haven't really played it for you. This is your first chord, then your second chord. And then your, your final chord. What I do here is I'm actually playing the B major seven. I'm playing it as a major 13 and I don't actually have the major seven in there. So I guess that's kind of cheating. Um, but I play it as a major 13 at the moment for some reasons I'll talk about in a sec. But if you just played everything as written, you would get this. So let's talk a bit about why this cadence works. I think the, the, the way that I understand this cadence is not at all from a functional viewpoint, but purely as a voice leading thing. So my chair's got wheels. Sorry, it's, it's something, something to do. Um, on a purely voice leading basis, if you add in the 13th to the B flat, the sixth, like I was doing, sorry, can I have that? Then you can, oh, this is very unprofessional. You can see that uh, if I forget about the bass for the moment, because um, the bass, to be honest, I think is not misleading, but um, if you ignore the bass, it becomes a lot easier to, to understand what's going on, I think. So we. If we ignore the bass, we have this. Let's skip out the bass note, I've got this. And then the B, if I keep the 13th in, I get exactly the same shape. So in terms of ignoring the bass, it's the same chord for two bars under this thing. This lovely chord, and then 
it just moves down chromatically. Okay, with the B flat staying the same. So in this, there's absolutely no functional interpretation from this point of view. It's purely a, I want to get to this chord. How am I going to do it? I'm just going to go move everything up one chromatically. Uh, but it's nice to keep one of the notes the same. And if you keep the B flat the same, you get this really nice. Thing. Uh, if you don't throw in the 13, uh, which is, you know, you don't have to, um, then you get this kind of dancing around the third. Of, of, of your of your one chord. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean the the notes around the third kind of go four minor three three. But... The first thing I thought of when I when I saw it like this is is as a kind of chest to Picardy kind of thing, uh, which is a fancy. When I say fancy. It means I did GCSE music way of um, looking at this resolution, which always makes me think of something like Takata and Fugue or something. That's just a minor, sus2, sus4, major. So a T.S. to Picardy is just basically ending a minor cadence with a major one, rather than the minor one that's in the key. Okay. Um, so that's another way of looking at the, in a purely kind of like voice, well, it's a bit more functional, I guess, that interpretation is, is, is a T.S. to Picardy kind of thing. That still doesn't really explain what's going on in the bass. Um, and the first thing I thought as well when I saw the bass was that it's probably a tritone substitution somewhere, but I really don't think it is. Uh, functionally, I think the best interpretation that I can come up with is, I think of this B chord, I'm going to ignore what the, the, the E flat chord here, which is like a two chord. Uh, in a sense of like, if you want to think of it as a two, five, one somehow, or as the subdominant chord, I'm just gonna ignore it for the minute, just gonna look at the last two chords, this B major seven, which is weird normally for a, for a penultimate chord, uh, to an E flat major seven. So I think of this B major seven as a G sharp minor, G sharp minor nine, I guess. That enharmonically is an A flat minor, which is the minor four chord. In, uh, the key B flat major. So in some sense, the last two chords of this sound like a minor four to a major one, which is a cadence I'm going to talk about a lot because it comes up in so many places and it's probably one of my favorite chord things. You hear it in so many Beatles songs uh, everywhere. But that's a way of thinking about this B to E flat is as a, is as, a as an A flat minor to E flat, okay, just enharmonically. That's kind of what it sounds like. I have no idea what a good interpretation of this is. I have no idea what uh, the the original intention was. I am not a professional musician, so don't take my word for any of this, but that's just how I feel about this piece. Normally for these kind of videos, what I wanna do is find loads of different songs that have the same chord progression in them uh, and just discuss that one chord progression in all the times it appears. I couldn't find any other places where this kind of progression appears. So if you know any, please share your information because I would love to see some more because I think it's really, really nice. Um, bow. Oh. Oh.